Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back. In our previous lecture, we are discussing about stability of a uh, UAV. So, what should be the CG location of, an, of a UAV so that the system behaves stable? In fact, we are also discussing about what should be the limits of this CG traverse so that the system still remains stable, right? So, so we witness that the CM with variation of angle of attack for this UAV should have a negative slope. So, this is considered as stable system, stable and it is static, statically stable, static stability. So, the negative slope itself does not guarantee you that it is statically stable, the CM alpha is less than 0, the slope here is less than 0. It is the necessary condition, but the sufficient condition should be CM naught should be greater than 0 here, right. And the corresponding trim that you achieve is a positive angle of attack, alpha trim. Right? So, for a statical st static stability. So, static stability in terms of longitudinal motion for, for a system to be statically stable during its longitudinal motion should be less than 0 and C m naught should be greater than 0. Right. Negative slope should be negative and this y intercept should be positive. We considered various cases to start with wing alone. Say this is your wing and this is your quad line. For this case, we assume that wing incidence angle is 0, I w is 0, which is the angle between the chord line of this wing and the fuselage reference line. So, when we assume this, it means the chord line coincides with the fuselage reference line, right. Let this wing is at an angle of attack alpha. Let this point be the location of aerodynamic center and the corresponding distance with respect to leading edge of this wing is x a c, right. And say the C C G of this system, say, say if it is a UAV, a wing alone UAV, let us assume a wing alone UAV, one side of the swing, right. Say if we have a motor here. So, assuming that the CG is located somewhere at this location, right. Say this is your CG and the corresponding distance is x CG with respect to leading edge of this, right. So, this is your x CG. Now, due to this flow, there will be lift which is acting perpendicular to free stream, which is lift of wing and there is drag, drag of wing. The same time, we are considering a generalized case where the wing also have a pitching moment about aerodynamic center, that is moment about aerodynamic center. 
mh. Now, the total lift of aircraft is lift of wing, right? which implies CL of aircraft is CL of wing here, which is CL naught of wing plus CL alpha of wing. Here, the wing in the wing angle of attack as well as the aircraft angle of attack or the reference angle of attack is considered as same, right. So, C L alpha into alpha, where C L alpha is for the wing, right. So, the aircraft C L naught is equals to C L naught of the wing since because why because the lifting surface is wing L 1 here in this case, right. So, the aircraft C L naught is considered as wing C L naught and the aircraft lift curve slope is equals to the lift curve slope of the wing, where you can express the C L of the aircraft as C L naught of the aircraft plus C L alpha of the aircraft into angle of attack, which is equals to C L naught of wing plus C L alpha of wing into alpha. So, by, by comparing the constants and the coefficients of alpha, you will arrive at the wing C L naught now will be equal to the aircraft C L naught at the same time the lift curve slope of the wing is equals to C L alpha of the aircraft. Now, consider the pitching moment about C G. Let us say if I want to write moment about C G. So, moment about C G is equals to moment about aerodynamic center which is already acting about the aerodynamic center plus what it should be the force multiplied with the distance. So, what is the normal force to this chord line or the fuselage difference line here L w cos alpha plus d sin alpha x c g minus x a c. Why? Because pitch up is considered as positive. Now, let us say if the c g is ahead of a c, this terms become this term the contribution from this term is negative. So, this so this term will always remain positive right. So, the pitching moment if the c g is ahead of the aerodynamic center. So, the lift will contribute towards pitch down moment. Any change in angle of attack increases the lift that increases your pitch down moment. Okay. So, this sign convention is automatically taken care like by assuming pitch up is positive and pitch down is negative that if the distance if the C g is ahead it will be negative and if, if the C g is behind that means, this quantity is larger than this quantity. So, this will be this term will be automatically positive. Right. this is half rho v square s into C m C g into C bar is equals to C m about half rho v square s. So, please make a correction this is moment about aerodynamic this is moment about the aerodynamic center of the wing right. So, C m a c of wing please add a subscript w here half rho v square s C bar into C m about aerodynamic center of the wing plus half rho v square s if I take it out C l cos alpha plus C d sin alpha into x C g minus x A c right. So, if I non dimensionalize this moment about C g of the aircraft is equals to moment about aerodynamic center of the wing plus C l cos alpha plus C d sin alpha into x bar C g minus x bar A c A c of the wing sorry this is A c of the wing x a c of the wing right, where x bar c g is or x bar is equals to corresponding distance non dimensionalized by mean aerodynamic curve. So, here we talk about this alpha let us say if this is the equilibrium state then the resultant moment is 0. Right. 
we talk stability about an equilibrium right so this alpha whatever we, the stability equation or the moment equation that we are going to write we want to see how this behaves under the disturbance and moreover assume the angle of attack here is a small angle of attack because the disturbance ultimately we are going to encounter is a small disturbance when we talk about stability we talk about the equilibrium point right and the disturbance is assumed to be very small here so say let alpha be the delta alpha of the actual disturbance where initially you are flying at zero angle of attack right say and now say there is a disturbance that is that itself is alpha which is very small right cl of wing so there is another correction here this is drag of wing and this is cl of wing and cd of wing right please make this correction cl of wing into x bar cg minus x bar ac of wing since alpha is small or alpha itself is a perturbed alpha per perturbation in angle of attack and say cos alpha is 1 and sin alpha is alpha and the product alpha into cd which will be very very small is neglected okay. so this pitching moment of the entire aircraft can be expressed as cm not plus cm alpha into alpha right this is for the entire aircraft i am not giving this subscript again cg or the aircraft here so from now we'll consider the cm not is for the entire aircraft and cm alpha is also the entire aircraft. so this is cm ac of wing plus cl not of wing plus cl alpha of wing into alpha x bar cg minus x bar ac of c hmm. so again by comparing the constant and coefficients what we have is cm not is equals to cm ac of wing plus cl not of wing into x bar cg minus x bar ac of wing and cm alpha is equals to cl alpha of wing into x bar cg mi minus x bar ac of the wing so these are the two conditions that we derive from this moment by moment equation now for a statically stable system we Uh, we we witness that cm alpha has to be less than 0 and cm cm not should be greater than 0 first let us look at necessary condition right cm alpha has to be less than 0 right so for this to be less than 0 cl alpha is always positive right this difference between the aerodynamic center and the cg should be negative right that means the cg should be if this quantity need to be negative the cg should be ahead of the aerodynamic center right so even for the in the first video we witnessed the fly, flight of a flying wing so in that case there is no tail right it's a wing alone configuration so for the system to be stable what we have done is we place the cg ahead of the aerodynamic center we know how to find the aerodynamic center right for a given platform we can find out by using this expression c bar is equals to 2/3 cr into 1 plus lambda plus lambda square divided by 1 plus lambda where lambda is the taper ratio right so let us draw the plan form of the uav that we okay assume that this is the uav that we have flown in the first lecture now 
we know how to calculate the aerodynamics into c bar here mean aerodynamic sorry aerodynamic chord so this is my c bar this is that means at this particular location the chord represents this c bar right where lambda is lambda is equals to ct by cr so we have done enough exercises and solved enough problems to know to calculate to figure out the mean aerodynamic chord right once you have this mean aerodynamic chord project it to the root chord right and then this will be your mean aerodynamic chord right since you can't measure this distance here directly right so with with the fuselage reference line you will have some i mean fuselage reference reference line is uh, will be helpful for you to actually measure the physical distance right even with the model but here you don't know because although you can figure out what is y y of mac right mean aerodynamic chord which is b by 6 into 1 plus 2 lambda by 1 plus lambda so although you can but it doesn't make any sense because the cg that you will measure you will of course make the lateral cg balanced right but the longitudinal cg is the thing that you have to figure out right or or say by the end i, I need to place this longitudinal cg or the cg along this longitudinal axis should be ahead of this aerodynamic center right now that's that's a reason why see since the lateral cg is balanced all the, the cg that you can, the longitudinal cg you will be measuring is about this particular axis or fuselage reference line okay yeah. so that's the reason why i was balancing that uh, wing alone uh, right wing the fly uh, the the wing that we used to demonstrate the stability right concept of stability in the previous lecture so i was trying to shift the center of gravity ahead and behind by placing some dead weight ahead right so i am trying to figure out where the cg is located for that particular wing right by balancing at a particular location along the longitudinal axis right so i know, i'll be easily i can easily figure out what is the cg location on the longitudinal axis if i have this mean aerodynamic chord on the longitudinal axis it becomes easy for me to make the system stable right so in order to do that i need to project this mean aerodynamic chord onto the root chord and that 25% of this for the subsonic flow right subsonic flights consider the 25% of this mean aerodynamic chord and that particular location which is at 25% of this mean aerodynamic chord is your aerodynamic center approximate aerodynamic center ac ac of ring now you should make sure that the cg for this wing alone uav should be ahead of the aerodynamic center you should design the system in such a way that the cg should be ahead you need to place your battery somewhere here because see it's like m1x1 there is a distribution additional distribution here and the and the wings are having the sweep right so the cg will be will also be behind in most of the cases right if you don't design it properly see why we are pushing why we are giving the sweep in the first place why can't we simply use a rectangular wing if we use a rectangular wing or a tapered about mid mid point here we are giving a sweep at the same time without any sweep we can still have a taper right but the issue is the aerodynamic center will lie on the same line say if you have a wing which is tapered same wing plan uh, what do you call same wing span and with the same taper if you have a wing like this say say this is your aerodynamic center so uh, mean aerodynamic chord and say this is this will be your aerodynamic center in that case but the cg in some cases you will not be push be, you will not be able to push be, uh, i mean uh, beyond certain limit if the aerodynamic center is too close to the leading edge there is not much mass distribution here so it will automatically the cg will automatically shift behind and then what you have to do is to extend a rod and mount a motor here so that you are adi adding a mass ahead of the leading is to shift the cg ahead and there are certain disadvantages for this also during landing and all so that's the reason why you are trying see you the sweep for lateral stability is secondary reason but primary for a wing alone configuration is like pushing your aerodynamic center 
behind the CG. Coming back to this, the CG should be ahead of this aerodynamic center for CM alpha to be negative. Why? Because CL alpha of the wing is positive, it is a finite positive number. And yes, at the same time, when you make this CG ahead, this particular term here will be negative because CG is ahead of the aerodynamic center. Now, this negative and CL naught is positive. So, this becomes negative. If you use a cambered aerofoil or a camber airfoil, positively cambered airfoil, the CM AC of the wing is also negative. So, the CM naught of the aircraft becomes negative, which leaves you with the only option to trim it at negative angle of attack. But we are not interested in that solution, right? So, to make this positive, what I do is I will increase this CMAC. Increase when I say it is like towards 0 or positive. I want to make this CMAC positive, right? So, to make that CMAC positive, we have to select an aerofoil. that gives a positive CM AC, right, which is generally known as a reflex aerofoil. So, for reflex aerofoils, the trailing edge is a bit deflected upwards, it is like giving an elevator up, a similar concept. We will discuss what is elevator up, but so this at, at the same time this reflex aerofoils you have to compromise at the C L naught and C L alpha. So, you need, to, you need to properly select an aerofoil that gives you this CM, CM about aerodynamic center positive and the CG, the distance between them should be just sufficient enough to make it stable at the same time you should, uh, I mean it should help towards CM not positive, which enables you to trim at positive angles of it. Quad of the wing. And in the first case, we, we are talking about wing alone, right. Now, let us say we add a tail to it, right. So, when I saw draw this tail, okay, the size are not equal, wing and tail, right. Definitely tail is smaller than wing. Right. So, this is a chord line of the of the tail. And this symmetric aerofoil that I am using here. Right. So, the chord of the tail, and this is your tail, say, say tail. So, this is your wing. this is your tail and so this chord of this wing is inclined to this fuselage reference line at an angle i of t called tail setting angle right i of t is known as tail tail setting angle right so now there is v infinity and angle of attack with respect to Fuse plus difference line FRL here. So, similar to the first case, we have the aerodynamic center of the wing, which is at, at a distance xac of wing with respect to leading edge of the wing or the leading edge with respect to the root cord, leading edge of the root cord of the wing, right. And now, say you have the CG of this entire aircraft located at a distance x c g with respect to the leading edge of the root cord of the wing x c g right. And finally, say this is your aerodynamic center of the tail a c of t. Right. So, this aerodynamic center of the tail 
these distances are measured along the chord length parallel to the chord length right so this is your x ac of your tail with respect to leading edge of the root chord of the vein now again we know this is lift of wing and i'm not considering the drag anyways we are going to neglect them neglect those terms so let us talk about lift and the and by assuming a small angle of attack l sin alpha will becomes l cos alpha will becomes l lift of wing now what we are interested is so this is your wing lift from the wing and the same same time we'll consider the moment about aerodynamic center of the wing okay say v infinity ideally should be parallel right whatever the wing is facing or the fuselage reference or with or the aircraft is facing should be same as what the tail has to face so ideally it should be v infinity and this has to be alpha right but we witnessed i mean we we studied about downwash and upwash effect right so the combined effect will induce a downwash at the tail right so this induced downwash see downwash is nothing but downward flow right here you can you can assume that it may not be exactly same but we can still assume it's as a downward flow right so this com because of this downward component this will that v infinity will be uh, now be modified right if this is your downwash w okay small w okay downwash so because of this the flow at the tail is is modified so this is your v infinity prime and the corresponding angle this is epsilon which is induced because of this downwash right now i can take a parallel to this right this i can represent it as v infinity prime v infinity prime at the tail and this particular angle is epsilon right and this is my angle of attack of tail what is alpha of tail here see this is epsilon i should write epsilon in this color because it is induced by the downwash right so this is my alpha of tail so uh, angle of attack is defined with respect to the reference line here i am talking about tail right total angle of attack of tail is ang is a angle of attack with respect to the flow plus tail setting angle so this is alpha of t right so what this angle becomes if this is alpha and this is epsilon what this angle will be alpha minus epsilon this particular angle will be alpha minus epsilon right so total angle of attack of the tail i of t is equals to sorry alpha of t total angle of attack of the tail is equals to tail setting this particular angle is a summation of this angle and the corresponding angle marked in the marked with the white chalk right so this particular angle is alpha minus epsilon plus tail setting angle i of t right and we can further express alpha as epsilon as epsilon naught plus do epsilon by do alpha into alpha this we already discussed in our earlier lectures assuming this contribution is very small you can say epsilon is do epsilon by do alpha into alpha so what is alpha of tail is i of t plus 1 minus 2 epsilon by do alpha into alpha this is the angle of attack at the tail right in terms of angle of attack of the wing and downwash and i of t so it's a function of all these para three parameters here now let us look at what is the total lift of this aircraft 
since we are using a symmetric wing, symmetric uh, aerofoil for tail, we are not considering the moment about aerodynamic center in this case. So, the total lift of the aircraft is equals to, so the overall forces acting lift, uh, I mean upward forces are lift of wing plus lift of tail, right. So, if I am lifting a rigid body, measuring the aircraft, whatever we are considering is a rigid body here. So, we are considering a rigid body, the total upward force that is acting on this is a summation of force acting at this point plus the force due to my left hand, right is the total force acting. Similarly, the total force on this aircraft lift force acting on this aircraft is lift of wing plus lift of tail, principle or principle of superposition, right. So, this is half rho v infinity square s into C L of the aircraft is equals to half rho v infinity square s into C L of wing plus half rho v infinity prime square right. Do not you see this? Because the lift at the tail is because of the flow at the tail and the resultant flow here is v infinity prime which is modified due to the down wash right and the corresponding surface area to generate lift at tail is s of t where s of t represents the planform area of the tail right. Half rho v square s t into C L of tail right. So, if we want to see what is the non dimensional lift coefficient for this entire aircraft is contribution from lift of wing plus eta s t by s s t by s eta s t by s into s t by s into C L of tail. Right. Where eta is half rho v infinity prime square tail efficiency factor, half rho v infinity square. So, when this can be won? When there is no interference, right? When there is no downwash here, that means if the wing and tail are separated by enough distance, we can assume that eta is equals to 1. So, this equals to C L naught of the total aircraft plus C L alpha of the total aircraft into alpha is equals to C L naught of the wing plus C L alpha of wing into alpha of wing plus eta S T by S into C. Since we are using a symmetric airfoil for this, the C L naught will be C L naught of the tail will be 0 because of the symmetric aerofoil. So, what you have is C L alpha of tail into alpha of tail right. This implies C L naught of the aircraft plus C L alpha of the aircraft into alpha is equals to C L naught of the wing plus C L alpha of the wing into angle of attack at the wing or say this alpha wing is nothing but the actual angle of attack here right into alpha plus eta s t by s into C L alpha of tail into what is alpha of tail? We already derived it right which is the summation of tail setting angle plus the resultant angle with respect to v infinity prime right. Resultant angle when I say with respect to fuse loss difference line here. So, the, this is I of t plus 1 minus dou epsilon by dou alpha into alpha. Okay. So, now by comparing the constant of the coefficients of alpha, right what you have is C L naught of this entire aircraft with the wing and tail combination is equals to C L naught of the wing is, is contributed due to C L naught of the wing and tail setting angle right lift lift because of tail setting angle. See although the I of 
the angle of attack is zero here. Let us say if alpha is zero for this entire aircraft with the wing and tail combination, there is there is always a lift from the tail, which is contributing towards the pitch down moment, right? So this lift from the tail is irrespective of whether alpha is whether we are flying it positive alpha or not, right? You understand this point, right? So this I of t is uh, is the one which is contributing towards a lifted zero angle of attack, right? So C L naught of the aircraft with a lifted zero angle of attack is contributed because of the C L naught of the wing. Say if you also consider a symmetric aerofoil here for the wing, in that case C L naught of the wing is zero, right? And when you, when you don't consider any I of t, that means I of t is zero. That means for symmetric wing and symmetric tail, the C L naught of the aircraft is zero. And C L alpha of the aircraft is equals to C L naught. Uh, yeah, so C L alpha of wing plus eta S T by S is the interference factor, and C L alpha of tail into one minus dou epsilon multiplied by one minus dou epsilon by dou alpha. Do you remember this numbers, equation numbers? ST, ST nine and ten, stability nine, and stability ten. This, right? So the CL alpha lift curve slope of the aircraft is a combination of lift curve slope of the wing plus the angular. It is due to the tail lift curve slope. Right? These are the normalizing factors for this. So the next step is to figure out what is the pitching moment. So ultimately, what we want to know is what should be the CG location for which this wing and tail combination becomes stable. So for a wing alone configuration, we figured out. So qualitatively, we discussed may not be the exact with the exact number that will come up. Right? Once we discuss about static margin and all, then we'll come up with what should be the exact value of CG quantitative definition of CG, right? Or CG limits. So for each and aircraft, every aircraft, it changes. And for a given aircraft with a given starting margin, you can get it, get to know what is the corresponding location of the CG. But qualitatively, let us first understand wh where the CG should be, like, right? Either should be ahead of the aerodynamic center, or what should be the tentative location at which it has to be, so that the system behaves stable. So, why we are doing this exercise is to figure out what is the CM naught, because for a statically stable aircraft, we figured out CM. CM not in the longitudinal case, CM not has to be greater than zero, and CM alpha should be less than zero, right? So, in order to see what is the CM alpha and CL, CM what should be the CG location for which the CM not of this air of the wing and tail combination has to be positive, and at the same time with the same CG location, it has to give CM alpha for this wing and tail combination negative, right? So, to to look into that, we have to first write down the equation moment equation about the CG for this. Right. Moment about CG of this aircraft is moment about aerodynamic center of the wing plus lift of wing. See, moreover, we haven't assumed any offset of this CG with respect to fuselage reference length. So, Z CG is not considered. So, since we are considering, say, if this is your, so this is your aircraft, this is your X. This is your C and this is your Y, right? So, for the longitudinal case, we are talking about a uh, motion X Z plane, right? Now, the Z C G X C G we are talking about only X C G, not the Z C G here. We assume that for this U A V, the Z C G is coinciding with this fuselage reference line. Right? There is no offset with Z offset with respect to fuselage reference line. So. And yeah, uh, here we are not considering the drag because, anyways, we are going to neglect them that we have witnessed in the first case where wing alone while deriving the moment equation for wing alone configuration. So, lift of wing into x bar c x c g 
minus x a c because the C g is behind the aerodynamic center here the, the lift contributes towards positive moment right pitch up moment. So, lift of wing into x C g minus x a c minus y minus because the lift of the tail is behind the C g in this case right. So, the force into moment arm here contributes towards the negative moment right. So, lift of tail into multiplied by the corresponding moment arm which is x a c of tail minus x c g right. This minus this minus this distance will get get you with the moment arm with respect to the c g right. So, c m c g is equals to c m a c of wing plus c l of wing multiplied by x bar c g minus x bar a c of wing minus lift of tail is eta s t by s into c l of tail multiplied by x bar a c of tail minus x bar c g. C m c g is equals to C m naught of the aircraft plus C m alpha of the aircraft into alpha, which is equals to C m a c of the wing plus C l naught of the wing plus C l alpha of the wing into alpha and the corresponding moment associated momentum associated with it, right? Minus eta s t by s into C l alpha of tail into i of t x bar c g minus x bar a c of tail minus x bar c g. Uh, alpha of t ok. So, this implies ok this equals to that is CMAC of the wing minus eta s t by s into C l alpha of t into 1 i of t plus 1 minus dou epsilon by dou alpha multiplied by alpha into the multiplied by the corresponding moment arm x a c of tail minus x bar c g. Right. Now, by comparing these two equations, well, this is also a moment about c g of the system, this is also moment about c g of the system. So, now comparing these two equations, right, what you have is c m naught of the aircraft a by c represents here aircraft right is equals to c m about aerodynamic center of the wing plus c l naught of the wing multiplied by the corresponding momentum minus eta s t by s c l alpha of tail into i of t x bar a c of tail minus x bar c g. Right. And C m alpha of the aircraft is equals to C m C l alpha of the wing. So, this is the thing right the coefficients of alpha will be C l alpha multiplied by the corresponding momentum. At the same time the still C l alpha multiplied by the corresponding yeah. C l alpha of wing into x bar C g minus x bar a c of wing minus eta s t by s. So, this particular quantity s t by s multiplied by x bar a c of tail minus x bar C g is considered as tail volume ratio. Right. This particular quantity is known as V h tail volume ratio, tail volume ratio of horizontal tail. 
that S T by S into x bar A C minus x bar C G into C L alpha of tail 1 minus the epsilon by dot. This is your yeah, pitching moment like these parameters are important to analyze the stability of the system, right? static stability of the system for the longitudinal case. So, for a system to be statically stable say wing and tail if I have a combination of wing and tail if it has to be statically stable then C m naught has to be positive. right? So, C m a c in general we consider is a cambered error fall which is negative. right? And say here in this case the C g is behind the aerodynamic center let us say that means this contributes towards positive right. So, this is positive so this is positive okay. and minus eta S t by S C l alpha of tail into i of t if i of t is negative this will this particular term will also contribute towards positive moment. If i of t is 0 you do not have any tail contribution in the moment. Uh, moment coefficient at 0 angle of attack. Right. So, if i of t is 0 you do not have tail contribution in pitching moment. So, all you need to play around is this if the C g is behind the aerodynamic center. right? So, the advantage let us see what is the advantage of this tail. Right. Let us say in the first case i of t is 0 there is no i of t. Now, what happens in that case? This i of t is 0 that means the chord line of this tail coincides with the fuselage reference line here right. Now, this particular term is 0 and we assume that the C g is behind the aerodynamic center. So, this is positive. So, this particular term we need to ensure that we have considered enough distance in between these two and we have choose a proper aerofoil to make sure that it all comes the corresponding moment about aerodynamic center of the wing right. This particular term turns out to be positive right. So, this is the first case and say now by by doing that what we are fixing is the C g should be behind the A c. Now, if you have a C g behind the A c this is positive C l alpha is positive. So, this entire contribution from this term is positive in that case. Now, C if C m alpha has to be negative you have to consider enough tail volume ratio and C l alpha to make sure that this wing and tail combination will satisfies this necessary condition of longitudinal static stability right. So, this particular term should be. So, if this has to be negative this particular term should be greater than this particular term first term right. This is the moment contribution by the tail and this is the moment contribution because of the wing right. So, this C l alpha and this particular term tail volume ratio plays a major role in making sure uh, in uh, ensuring the stable flight of this configuration wing and tail combination. Now, let us consider the second case where i of t is non zero right. So, what happens if i of t is positive? So, this whole contribution from the tail becomes positive for C m naught negative for C m naught right. So, if you have i of t positive, positive means the uh, the chord of chord line of this is inclined above the fuselage difference line right. That is i of t is positive. Now, say if the C g this particular term the distance between C g and A c are very close right. Otherwise, the C g of the wing and A c are the same location. This contribution is 0. Right. What you have is C m about aerodynamic center of the wing. Right. Be, what we are doing right now we are, sh we are thinking that the C g of this coincides with this point. Right. That means, this becomes your x c g again effectively. So, x c g and x c g are same you do not have a moment arm there to account for C l naught of the wing and the, or the pitching moment contribution from the C l naught of the wing. So, this particular term is 0 that means, what what do you have here? So, if you are left with C m a c of the wing minus eta s t into C l alpha of tail plus i of t into the moment arm right here. 
So, now if C m naught has to be positive, so I of t has to be negative so, and this particular value should, yeah, should be more than this value. So, if I of t is negative, this trail contribution is positive and C m naught becomes positive if it is more than this C m a c of the V. So, what happens in the second case if the C g is exactly at the A c. So, if it is at the A c, this becomes 0, C m alpha is it is a negative term, eta S t by S C x c this particular term is positive because the C g is ahead of the aerodynamic center of the tail. right? So, this is positive and C l alpha of tail is positive, 1 minus dou epsilon beta alpha is positive. So, this is a positive term that contributes towards the negative pitching moment. Right? So, this is one case where you still have the even if your C g is exactly at the A c of the wing, you can still have a slight here. Right? Because it is satisfying the condition of C m alpha negative and C m C m naught positive. Right? So, case 1. if C g is, is behind A c of V. Right. Let us say this is your case 1 and we have witnessed that for. So, in this again there are two cases where if the C g is behind A c that means you have a combination like this wing and tail combination this is your i of t right and say this is your c g this is your aerodynamic center of tail and this is your aerodynamic center of wing right now in this case if the c g is behind this a c a c of the wing Right. So, there are two cases if i of t is equals to 0 in this again case a if i of t is equals to 0. So, this particular term x c g minus x a c right. So, for c m c m alpha to be negative is that going to affect. So, the condition what we need is c m alpha to be negative if i of t is 0 and the c g is behind the a c. So, this term is positive and you have to choose this tail volume ratio and C l alpha plays a major role here. right? So, for C m alpha to be negative what you need is tail volume ratio V h and C l alpha of the tail plays a major role. right? So, these two are crucial in deciding C m alpha negative. For it to be negative we need to choose a proper values of this. So, when you are choosing this tail volume ratio which means you are actually sizing the tail in terms of both distance between C g and A c at the same time area area of the tail. Right. So, you know how to select the wing area here we are trying to select the tail area and the corresponding distance between right. and the second condition is C m naught should be positive how it can be made positive in this case if if C g is behind the A c and there is no i of t, i of t is 0 that means the tail contribution is 0 here. So, this is positive right C g is behind the A c this is positive right. So, this is negative and you have to choose this C g minus this distance between the because C l naught of the wing you are deriving it from the design requirements right or say mission requirements as per the design C l. We already did that exercise right, where you figure out what is the C l naught of that. So, you do not have much control at this particular stage on this C l naught. So, what you what you can do is like choose the proper distance between C g and A c. So, so, x bar C g and x bar A c distance between them plays a major role in this particular i of t is equals to 0. Now, in the same case where C g is behind A c, if i of t is non-zero, 
So, when you say non zero it can be either positive or negative. Let us say if we consider negative i of t. So, i of t is not going to affect your pitching C m alpha right. So, this again depends upon the same conditions for the C m alpha to be negative. So, it is not going to change it has to be negative then V h and C l alpha of the tail plays a major role right. And what about C m naught? So, say if i of t is positive that means, this particular chord line is above the fuselage reference line or oriented above the uh, the inclination is above the fuselage reference line right. So, in this case i of t is positive x a c minus this distance is positive and all the rest of the terms are also positive. So, this contributes towards negative moment. So, this distance has to increase a lot. If that is happening, if this distance is increasing because this is the only positive term, this is negative say if it is a cambered aerofoil and this is negative right. So, what happens in that case? C l alpha of the wing if you consider a large distance between this C g and A c this will also become large. So, you have to keep increasing your tail volume ratio here. That means, the size of the tail increases and the wing and distance between them should also increase right. So, if we have negative this is the problem you, if you want to give a positive of course, it will be helpful in generating lift overall lift because the total lift is lift of wing plus lift of tail that we have derived and we, saw, we witnessed that at 0 angle of attack the lift coefficient of the total aircraft is a summation of lift coefficient of the wing plus contribution from the tail because of the i of t right. So, positive i of t will contribute towards positive lift that means, lift will increase, but it will not contribute towards your moment this necessary condition for stability. When i t is greater than 0 here, so for C m naught to be positive the C l naught the contribution from this wing C l naught and the corresponding momentum should be higher right. This particular term has to be positive because all this becomes negative. For C m naught to be positive this distance has to increase. If we have a greater momentum with respect to say aerodynamic center of the wing then this particular term will also be positive right there is a strong contender to this negative right. So, ultimately what we want here is C m alpha to be negative that is first or the necessary condition here right. So, we cannot what do you call that we need to increase the tail volume either by increasing the area of the wing or by distance between the A c and C g right. At the same time we have to choose a C l alpha. In that. So, the advantage for having I of t positive is that you have contribution in the lift, but in case of pitching moment it is a disadvantage.